Hi there, my name's Andrew Adams from Parker Adams Boat Sales and I'm here to bring you another walkthrough tour. Now, this is fairly an unmistakable interior. This is, of course, another Sargo. This is a Sargo 36 flybridge. You can tell it's a flybridge because normally you have those lovely panels up here that let in light, but of course you can't do that because that's where you're sitting upstairs. So this Sargo 36 is a really, really lovely boat. Um, it's out here at Hamble Point at the marina at the moment, it's out of the water. And what I'm going to do is show you over the boat. What's quite interesting about this boat is we've actually got two 36 flybridges on our books at the moment. And this is in partnership with Sargo Boats UK. We are their approved used boat brokerage. And what is quite interesting about this is because Jonathan did a walkthrough tour on the other Th Sargo 36 fly, and I've not watched it. So I'm quite intrigued to know how our walkthrough tours will be different on basically the same boat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off inside on this. There's a gentleman just next door doing a hole polish um, on his beautiful maxi sailing boat. So I'm going to try and stay inside as much as I can because uh, there's a fair bit of noise from the, the polishing machine. But let's have a good look through this Sargo 36 flybridge. So as you would expect, a really nice spacious saloon area here. Now, as always with the fly, with the Sargos, uh, you've got the galley, which is up here within the saloon area. And the galley is really nicely appointed. You've got a twin stainless steel stink, sink, not stink, it's a sink. Um, and then under here, you've got a Wallace diesel hob. Now, I did a walkthrough tour of the 31 Sargo earlier on today, and it had a three burner gas, but this boat doesn't have any gas. So it's got a diesel hob, which is a really nice way if you're not a fan of keeping gas on board. Now, electric, electronically, this table drops all the way down there, and this allows this area to work into another double berth. And then you can see the curtains that go all the way around here that allow this whole area to be enclosed to give you some nice privacy if you were to have a couple of guests staying in this area up here. So as we work forward, I always, always forget to turn the VHF off. I'm just going to turn that off now. So... Good time to talk. It's got a full suite of Garmin equipment on here. So you've got a Garmin 12-inch plotter here, and then there's a 16-inch Garmin plotter here, which is a really nice combination there. All of your Volvo Penta dials are all up here, and this boat's covered just under 150 hours. So it's a very, very, a barely used boat. And you can see, just telling you up there, the outside temperature is 14.2 degrees. Um, in terms of the helm, it's typical Saga. You've got this nice feature where the helm position rocks forward. You've got a bow thruster control. You've got twin controls here to give you um, your, all your vital data from your Volvo Penta um, engines. You've got auto trim tabs on this boat. You've got a radio remote controlled searchlight. Um, start stop um, Volvo Penta, it's keyless on this as well. And then you've got this really nice modern um, Volvo Penta um, controls here. And then you've got a separate Garmin um, system here to control the plotters. Um, something just to mention about these Volvo Penta um, drives. Um, this, this boat's fitted with twin DPI drives, which is the very latest technology in Volvo Penta drives. Now, why this is important is because this boat could be retrofitted with a joystick. So you could actually add dynamic positioning to this boat where you could control the boat with a joystick um, and then press a button and actually hold the boat in position when you go out to do your fenders, which is a really, really nice addition. So that's something that the DPI drives have over the older stern drives. Your helm position on this boat is a twin helm position. They've got the bolsters here, so you can lift those up, which gives you a bit more space if you're standing to, to be a passenger or driving, and then pop those down. And as with all sagas, I love the side access door. So if you are short-handed, you can be driving here. You've got this lovely knob in the middle that Jonathan and I absolutely love manoeuvring these boats with that. Um, but then you can step straight out here onto the pontoon, cleat access here. So the boats are really set up really nicely uh, to be able to ma manage them short-handed um, or obviously with crew communicate easily through all the doors, which opens obviously on this side. And then there's also a door which opens on that side. Um, in terms of the rest of the control systems, you've got uh, your nav instruments, your floor lighting, your access to your bilge pumps are here. Uh, you've got a fusion sound system that's got speakers which run throughout the boat and outside as well. And then you've got another instrumentation panel at the back here where you've got your main switch panels for the service, the engine, the table lift, which is, as I mentioned, up so, um, just behind there and goes up and down electronically. And the other thing you have here is an engine hatch. So I'm going to start off with the engines. Um, so press this button, and it, I think it's the fastest opening hatch I've ever come across. It looks like I'm going in speedy motion there. Um, I've already moved the tender so it's um, in a position so it's just folding back nicely. And just in here, you've got twin Volvo Penta D6 340s. Now, these generators, as you probably guessed, 340 horsepower each. And it is all absolutely immaculate in there. It's proper eat your dinner off engine bay down there. Really, really tidy. 
Um, yeah, just a lovely engine bay. And engineers would love this engine bay because there's really good access that you can get all around um, both sides of the engine to do any of your essential maintenance or repairs should it be needed. So just come back. Now, this particular boat has got a full set of outside cushions. Um, they run all the way around here and they're the really nice indigo colour, which is the Diamante upholstery. And I love the way they're shaped, things like so you can still get access to the cleats. Um, they're nicely cut out here for all of the big chunky stainless steel rails. And of course, you've got up here really, really good access to all of the fenders. And stored just behind here, you have access to your table. So the table is really nicely stowed back behind there with really nice chunky stainless steel catches, which just hold everything into position. The storage underneath all of these lockers here, so you can lift these up. Um, you've got rope storage, it's all drainage as well. And I like things like the cushions are cut out, so actually it allows you to open up um, this seat without needing to take the cushions off. So it's just little touches that, that really nice attention to detail here. So let's go around this side, very big wide walkways. There's a nice window there into the aft cabin that I'll show you in a minute. And then typical Saga, you don't have any steps that sweep up onto the bow. And then you've got this lovely sun pad area at the front here. You've got front boarding options. So you've got a um, basically a ladder that drops down there to give you front boarding. You've obviously got a, a front windlass here and a nice amount of space and a little seat that you can sit in there. Now you do have a, um, a hatch in here, so you can take this, lift that up, and then you've got access there to the hatch if you were to need to get out or add a bit more light into there. And where this is different from most of the other Sargos, of course, is this flybridge that you can see up here. So we'll head up there um, in a moment. Let's go back downstairs and just finish off on downstairs um, on the cabin space, first of all. So if we keep working our way forward, um, I really like things like you've just got a little lift up here. You've got remote controls for the, um, for the bow thruster. You can lift that up and you've got chart storage at the back there. And then you've also got this really nice chunky chart storage in here. So you can see this boat really is designed for a serious offshore cruising uh, with lots of chart access. So let's look at the accommodation. We step down into here. You've got a lovely big central bed here. Now, of course, remember, um, this Sargo is actually the flagship of the range up until Dusseldorf this year. And we were lucky enough to be some of the first people on board the Sargo 45, which is an absolute beast. It was launched at Sup in Dusseldorf. And you can actually watch our walkthrough tour on that boat. Um, but you can see how this really was the flagship of the, um, the Sargo range up until the 45. Loads and loads of space brilliant um, use of cupboards all the way around you've got drawers you've got steps up to the bed everything's just so nicely thought out you've got big heads here and a separate wet area so you've got your toilets area here and then you can block this area off and that then becomes a complete wet room for the shower which is really nice and of course it's a jack and jill so you've got access through into the main cabin as well more storage in here and then step up storage underneath the, the steps um, what I really like as well is if you have a passenger sat there, you've got another bolster on here, but also you can just pop this footrest down and the passengers then got somewhere to put their feet as well if you want. And of course you've got another side access door there. So let's walk back through. Let's look at the other cabin. So there's another cabin down here. Now one thing I'm really impressed with down here is the standing height. Now unfortunately I'm not six foot like Jonathan, but you can see I probably would just about stand up if I were Jonathan, I'm about 5'10", just touching the top there, um, but you've got a really good amount of space through here. There's basically a double bed there and a single bed, which is brilliant if you've got a young child, so a brilliant boat set up for family cruising. I love this window, love the fact you can open it there. And then when I first came to this boat early on today, I thought this was a wardrobe. I opened it up, no, it's another head. It's really nice to see another heads in here. Again, you've got another window. Um, it's electric heads and obviously a sink built in there as well. So nice, nice surprise there, expecting to find a cupboard. Let's go back up again. Right, so let's venture out onto the, the aft deck and go up onto the flybridge. So of course the flybridge steps, I like the design on these where you've got the steps down in this down position here, but then you can just move that round and clamp that into position there. There's a little clip and that then gets that out of the way and gives you this really nice social area where you can put your table here, have a meal and eat outside. You can bring that back down again and then just go up to the flybridge. Now the flybridge has also got all these really nice cushions all the way around. Your helm position, once again you've got the bolster seat, um, you've got another 12 inch plotter just here, access obviously to your, your tabs, your controls. 
and this is your seating area. So the seating area here is designed that you can flip that like that and then have a meal up here as well. The flybridge is limited to five people, so for weight reasons there's five people allowed up here. But something else I really like is you can set this up as a bit of a sun pad area. So there's this area here that pulls out and then there's an infill cushion which is the one at the back there and that pops into place which then creates um, a full sun pad area into this place. And you can have it here into a couple of positions, that's the sun pad infill there. You can have it into full backrest mode, so that's then a backrest for that seat. You can have it as a headrest mode, so just if you're sunbathing and just want a little bit of lift up there for your sun, for your head, or you can pop it all the way down and you've got a full sun pad which runs the whole length down there. So I think that's a really good use of space on there. So that's quite a small flybridge, um, it's very functional and you've got lots of different uses. And then there's another really big piece of storage just under there where there's a flybridge cover and there's also a cockpit table which is stored under there as well. So a very, very versatile flybridge, although it's not the largest. Big Garmin plotter up here and then your remote control searchlight, TV aerials, etc. So if we come back down here, I mentioned that the TV aerial, do you know what, one feature I didn't show you, which I really like on this, is the fact that the TV is actually up in here. So the TV just drops down from the ceiling. How cool is that? So you'd have no idea that there was a TV up there, but the TV just drops down from the ceiling and then allows access to watch. There's also an HDMI cable in one of the drawers where you could plug your laptop into it uh, or stream movies or anything like that. But it is a JVC smart TV. And then just pop that back up again. Put the clip on and your television has disappeared. Really like that. So let's go down and what I'll do, doing this the opposite way around. So we started off on the boat, um, but let's just go down and have a look at the hull form um, on this Sargo 36. Just to point out another feature as well, I always point these out on the Sargos. They've got this brilliant ability to lift up part of the bathing platform to get access to the drives. So if you lift that up there, you can see easy access to the drives should you get a prop wrap or just want to clean the out drives off um, mid-season. Pop that back down again. So just going to step off the boat now. Now you can see this boat's actually got a, a really, really nice blue hull on it. It's a really big, chunky boat out of the water. These DPI drives here fitted with twin duo props, stainless steel props on each. Work our way around here. And the hull, as you would expect on a 2021 boat, is in just beautiful condition. Um, it's going to be cleaned and it's, it's due a, a good wash down, um, but you can see it's all presented very, very nicely. It's going to be um, washed down and prepped, ready for sale very, very shortly. Let's come back around to this side. So, I think that pretty much concludes this walkthrough tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, this has been the Sargo 36 Flybridge, um, powered, of course, by the Volvo Penta D6 340 engines on the DPI drives. Thanks so much, for, as always, for watching. I will look forward to bringing you the next video. All the best.